I'm going to start out with a card in the from the Simply Sparkling bundle. This is actually a card that's in my class, okay? Um, so we're going to, of course, use the stamps and the dies that um, go together as a bundle. And we're going to use the three-color ribbon, and we are going to color it, like I said. I've got these in-color pearls. And here is the stargazing paper. So this is the paper. These are, most, these are the ones I'm mostly going to use in the class are these here these bright fun like look at that that looks like bubbles like soda bubbles and so does this one and then this one look what i did there but anyway uh this is a really fun one we've got the uh blue one here and then i don't know as though i'm going to use these i mean i might be able to incorporate them in like maybe punch something out of one of these planets or something um, i haven't gotten all the cards designed just yet but it's going to be amazing so there you go there's that all right, so here are my cardstock pieces. I've got my envelope. I did go ahead and use the um, designer series paper to put on my envelope flap. I've got a card base out of Parakeet Party. Then I have a black layer. This is four by five and a quarter, same as my inside layer, four by five and a quarter. Um, what else? I also have another piece of that same designer series paper. I think it's three and a quarter by three and a half, but I can't remember. Yes, three and a quarter by three and a half. And then I have a scrap of white. And then I have a stylish shaped circle. This, I don't remember which one this is, but this one measures like two and an eighth inches. Uh, so if you're wondering what circle it is, it's just a little over two inches. Um, I've also taken one of the dies out of the set and I cropped out these fun bubbles to go onto our card. Very fun. Then we're going to do some stamping. So I've got to get a foam mat out here and my white. There's a couple scraps of white. Um, out of the stamp set, I have got the lemon and the happy birthday sentiment and then the, whoops, lime slash lemon slash orange slice and so we're going to do a few of those fun things so of course in your kit you will get white scraps you'll get black scraps for the bubbles you'll get all the cardstock pieces there you'll get the die cut circle um so you'll have everything that you need you'll have to cut your designer series paper but you'll have everything else that you need uh so they can just start making these cards right away all right so i've got two citrus slices and then I have a lemon. And let me put the lid on my ink so I don't, I guess I didn't need that scrap, so that's fine. I guess I didn't need this piece of paper either. Never know, right? Okay? okay, so I've got a few of my blends here. I've got the pumpkin pie, because obviously I'm gonna make one orange. I have parakeet party, and then a dark granny apple green to make my lime slice. I've got my two Daffodil Delights for my lemon, and then I have a Dark Cajun Craze to help uh, with my orange slice. You're probably thinking, what? <laughs> I know, right? So I'm going to start with my light pumpkin pie, and I'm going to do uh, just the insides of this orange. And I am going to go over this a couple of times because I want it to be a little bit darker than the light is, but I don't want it to be so dark that it's the same darkness as the dark. Does that even make sense? So if you go over these, you know, one or two times, then you can get them to be a little bit darker. Uh, don't go crazy, though, because sometimes then, you know, if you put too much uh, of the blend down, then it can bleed out because it's just, it's too much and the paper can't absorb all of it and then it just has to bleed out. So be careful. Okay, so that is the light. Now I've got the dark pumpkin pie and I'm gonna come and do the rind here with the dark. Meet up in the middle there. And I think I'm gonna go over this again also. There we go. And then I'm gonna bring in my Cajun and I'm going to go on the inside here and just make that a little darker. Something like that. But I might go back over it with my pumpkin just to kind of 
um, orange it up a little bit for lack of a better word. Okay, so we've got our orange done. Now we can work on our lime slice. So I'm gonna start with my light parakeet party. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna do the light on the inside pieces here. There we go. It's a little squeaky marker, isn't it? Go around here. There we go. And then we'll bring in the dark and we'll do the rind. Same thing we did with the orange, just kind of meet in the middle there. Maybe make it just a skosh darker. And then I've got a dark granny apple green that I'm going to come in and do this inside here. So that way I've just got, you know, a lot of color in there, which I really like. Then I'm going to bring in my light daffodil and I'm going to color my whole lemon with my light daffodil. And then I'm going to bring in my dark and then do uh, a little more with some shading and whatnot here. And you're probably kind of wondering why is that leaf stamped with the lemon, but yet it's not really connected. Um, it does come out of the dye connected, but I just snip it off uh, really quickly and easily, and then you can put it wherever you want. Okay, so I added a little bit of the dark lemon, and now I'm going to try to come back in and just kind of soften that line where that was. And then finally, I'm going to do my dark peak, or no, I always say peacock when I have parakeet out. So dark parakeet for that little leaf. Okay. So then I would take everything over to my stamp and cut and emboss machine and then I would get everything cut out and I almost lost my little leaf because I cut it off to see where I wanted to place it. So it kind of would come off. It would look something like that and then you just get cut around it. And it works just fine. All right. So we have those done. So let's push those out of the way. Uh, we can do a little bit of assembly here. So this piece of designer series paper, I'm going to put it so that the three and a half inch side is right here. I'm going to put this close to the right edge, right up to the edge there. Looking at it. Okay. There we go. Something like that. Then I have these fun bubble pieces. Uh, the DSP was three and a quarter by three and a half. And now that I think about it, I may have to lift this up a little bit because I forgot to put my bubbles on. <laughs> of course I did. Anybody who follows me knows that that's how I roll. I forget to do things all the time. All right, we're going to lift that up a little bit. So we've got these bubble pieces and I'm just going to kind of cut them in half a little bit just because they're going to be hidden on some of the sides. Now I was kind of a smart cookie, you guys, and I did use some adhesive sheets. Um, I really, I'm trying to get into the habit of using them when I do delicate detailed die cuts uh, because it's just, it's so much easier to put them down. I mean, like I, like I've said before, I'm pretty handy with the liquid glue, but this is a lot easier. Okay, so I'm going to kind of go underneath that, something like this. There we go. Okay. It's like I keep forgetting that I have it. So I actually put it out uh, near my stamp and cut and emboss machine so that I can see it uh, more, you know, so I can remember to actually use it because it's amazing. Okay, let's cut this one in half also, and same. And you can see that I don't have adhesive sheets on the entire thing, uh, which honestly I think is a little bit easier to get the adhesive sheets backing off of it if you don't, uh, because sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to get a hold of that stuff. Okay, we got some bubbles there, 
And then I think I'm going to just tuck this underneath or I'm going to snip it off and put it right to the edge. We'll see um, how it's going to work out for me. Since I didn't put my designer series paper down first or I didn't put these down first. Okay, so I think I'm just going to do this and then I'm going to snip off the rest. There we go. Okay, so then we have a little bit of detail because, you know, it's hard to have detail on black. Can you guys even see what I did? I'm trying to get it. Oh, oh, there, 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 there. There we have some bubbles showing up and then some bubbles down here um, on the side. So this is the Lemon Lolly um, ribbon, but it's so light that you can take your dark... Uh, parakeet party marker and you can color it parakeet party so that's what I'm gonna do on this card and I'm assuming most of you guys probably have blends so this shouldn't be a hard thing so I just wanted to show you the difference how awesome that is and how good that looks so I already have a couple of chunks here now well, let's just measure them and see this one's about three and a half and then the longer one is like four and a half almost five but they don't need to be this quite this long I'm going to take the ribbons and I am going to kind of lay them across the card. They're going to end up being something like this. Okay. But before we actually glue them down, I want to go ahead and add my uh, die cut pieces to my circle here. So I'm going to stamp my sentiment first. This is a little happy birthday or birthday wishes. Whoops. I'm not in the frame stamp that's in the stamp set. I need to pull that down just a little bit so I can see. I'm going to try to put it in the center there at the top of the circle. Got it. And then I'm going to add my little uh, fruit pieces here. So I'm going to start with my lemon and I'm going to do that one with a dimensional. And I'm just going to kind of stick it down here, uh, something like that. Maybe rotate it just a bit. There we go. And then my orange slice, I'm going to use glue on. And I'm just going to kind of tuck that under so it's upside down, just so it creates some interest there. And then my lime slice, I'm going to put about like that. I may have to cut this. Let's see. Or can I lift up my dimensional? I think I can. Yep. Okay, so let me get some glue here. And we'll kind of angle that the other way a little bit. And then I'm going to take my little leaf piece here and add it underneath the lemon. So I'm just going to put a tiny bit of glue right there. And then we will tuck it underneath. Too much glue. Tuck it underneath that lemon like that. Ooh, you know what? I wonder if we should stick it on the other side. Uh, or the oranges because we might need some green over there. Let's do that. Okay. Oh, goodness. It stuck to my hand. What do you know about that? Okay. So I am going to figure out where I want this ribbon. And you know what? I did a mistake again. And when I type up the directions and before I got to this step um, in the video that you guys will get for the class, I'm going to tell you, don't do what I do. Uh, do what I'm going to tell you to do now, which is to snip off the ribbon. So you would technically, you would add it to the designer series paper first. Um, and then <laughs> you would, but if we snip it off in a good angle, we should be good. And now I kind of thought that some tear and tape, uh, for this ribbon would probably be a pretty good idea. So I'm going to do that. I'm also going to angle this edge here. And so I'm going to put some tear and tape on this. And I love that you can tear it off because mine's a little long. And I'm going to take your pick tool in here and I should be able to get that off. There we go. Yep. Okay. And so I'm going to add my little circle about right here. Then I want, I think I want this 
to go about like that. And then this one's going to come over. So I may scooch that up just a bit. So let me angle this one. And that one's going to kind of cross over like that. So I'm going to snip off that. And then we're going to add some tear and tape to this one too. Where's my end? Okay, so we'll start down here. And I'm happy that I cannot see the tear and tape through my ribbon. So that is pretty cool. Sometimes you can see stuff through stuff, but yeah, I cannot see that really. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so go ahead and get the backing off of this. And then we're going to add our little crossy piece right here. So it's at a good angle. And then we'll just go straight up right there. And then we can cut that off. There we go. So obviously you should not do what Barb did. And you should put your little ribbon piece on uh, before you do all the work. So I will warn you um, in the class file to... Yeah, not do what I do instead. I'm going to put another one on there. Okay, so then we're going to add our little circle piece uh, about like that. Um, where are my gems? Here we go. So my little gems, I'm going to add a little gem right in the middle where that, th that thing crosses. So I've got a parakeet party gem here. Or I did until it flew across the table. And I'm going to stick that right there. And I think I'm going to add a couple more because they are cute. And I think they'll show up really good on this black layer. There we go. Okay. Now we can add it to the card base. I'm just going to use glue, not any dimensionals or anything. We'll just use glue. So go ahead and get that on there. Oh, you know what? Duh. Look at that. I left that hanging off there. That's not what we wanted to do, Barb. So you definitely, that's why you definitely need to do this before uh, you put the designer series paper down. Because if you don't, then you have this problem. So I will definitely warn you guys. <sighs> okay. <sighs> I think that's going to work. There. So like that. Um, and then we have an inside piece. I'm going to say you're so delightful. And I like to use the silicone mat when I pick up these kind of stamps because um, when you stick them on the mat, then they kind of get a chance to unfold, if you will, like if they've been twisted or turned or something like that. Putting them on um, the silicone mat will let them rest and then you can pick them up and normally they come out straight. So now that I've said that, it probably isn't going to be, but we're going to hope. Okay, so, and I'm going to use some Parakeet Party, and we'll just kind of add a few bubbles like that, and then I'm going to clean this off, and I'm going to go with some pumpkin pie, I think, I think, or maybe I should go with lemon, we'll see. As I'm kind of hovering this over, I'll see what I think. No, oh, no, I think this will work. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. So that's going to go on the inside. Got a little bit of a mess going on here. Got to be careful. I was having a heck of a time earlier today with getting ink literally all over everything I touched. Um, and part of my problem was, I don't know if this ever happens to you guys. I'm going to show you something here in just a moment. Um... Okay, so there is our adorable card. So this is one of the cards that you will actually make in my soda or simply sparkling class. So if you're interested in that, the link is in the description. Um, so now what I was going to tell you was this. Um, let's get a new pad out. So I don't know if you guys ever get this problem. When you're putting your lids on and off your memento pad, you can get ink all around the lid. You can see I do have some here. Not quite as bad as my other pad was. Um, and then you can get ink all around this ledge, okay? And you don't see it, so you don't know. 
um, until you touch it and then you touch something else. Well, I was using this a lot today and I kept getting black streaks on everything and I was so mad. So I finally took a baby wipe and I cleaned off my whole lid off my other pad. Where is it? Right here. Uh, so I cleaned off my entire lid and you can see it's already kind of getting messy, but I cleaned off the whole lid and then I took my baby wipe and I pushed it down. There's like a little Oh, what do you call that? A little channel in there. And I pushed it down in there and tried to get all the ink out of it as I could so that now I uh, can maybe quit getting ink all over my fingers. So um, if you guys have that same problem, get your baby wipes out and clean up your pad lid because that will definitely help.